Hi guys, I'm Tom and I'm a third year natural sciences student focusing in ecology and conservation. Last summer I got the chance to visit Kenya with the university for the module LEC 350 Tropical Ecology and Conservation. In this video I'll let you know a little bit about what we got up to when we were over there. We met John and Stuart, the lecturers joining us on the trip in Manchester, and after two very long flights plus a dash through the biggest airport I've ever seen to make our connection, we arrived in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. The field trip is mainly made up of game drives through national parks and reserves across the country, covering a range of habitat types and the species living within them. We met our safari van drivers at the airport and started the journey to our first destination, Lake Navasha. Naivasha is a natural freshwater lake which annually fluctuates in volume, acting as an important resource for both the wildlife and human populations surrounding it. The human pressures put on the lake, as well as the past introduction of alien species, make the ecosystem particularly interesting to study. We were camping at a slightly higher elevation to the lake shore, and just this small change presented us with two completely different habitat types. Around camp we caught and identified local butterfly species, and an excursion to the nearby crater lake provided an example of an ecosystem in miniature contained within the rim of a dead volcano. While we were here, we saw troops of vervet monkeys and identified the poo of many of the species frequenting the area. On the way to the crater, one baby giraffe got very friendly with our van, which I don't think any of us had any complaints about. We also got the chance to visit Hell's Gate National Park at sunrise, where we got to see loads of species for the first time and head for a walk down the valley thanks to its low predator population. The next stop was Lake Nakuru National Park, one of the busiest reserves in Kenya. The park is completely fenced, bringing unique management problems as there's no immigration or emigration of species. We were lucky enough to receive a talk by park staff themselves regarding these issues. We also set up motion activated cameras around our accommodation perimeter and managed to capture footage of a range of animals like hyenas and buffalo as they wandered by overnight. And then we were on to Alpajeta Conservancy, passing by the equator on the way. Alpajeta acts as the largest black rhino sanctuary in East Africa and is home to three of the world's last remaining northern white rhino. This was my favourite out of all of the parks we visited. On the first day we managed to see cheetahs, lions and elephants in a bit of a back-to-back -back safari dream. The Conservancy is one of only two in Africa to achieve IUCN greenless status, showing its excellence in managing vulnerable natural areas. And once again, we managed to receive a lecture from park staff on the innovative and sustainable biodiversity practices used in the Conservancy. One of the more sombre moments of the trip was a visit to the rhino graveyard in the park, where the impacts of past poaching in the area were highlighted. However, the mood quickly shifted when our van had a run-in with said species. We were staying in an open campsite in this area, meaning wild animals were free to wander around, especially at night, and this resulted in some of the best camera trap footage of the trip. And of course, the days where we were staying in tents ended up being the days where we were hit with some torrential downpours, but thankfully we had our resident chef, Jesus, who spent the whole trip travelling with us, keeping us happy with a constant stream of hot food. Once we'd eventually dried out, we headed to Samburu National Reserve, the highest altitude and hottest area of the trip. Exhaustion had started to kick in after getting up at 5am every day, so I will admit that he caused an accidental nap or two, but I can assure you I was awake for the exciting parts. The new altitude resulted in completely new habitat to study, with frequent turbine mounds, ostrich and geronook. The highlight of this park was a huge elephant family group crossing the road directly in front of our vans. Coincidentally, we had a talk by the organisation Save the Elephants later that evening, highlighting the struggles when it comes to the conservation of the species. We stayed in Samburu for one night before heading to our final destination, Mpala Research Centre. This location was a little different to the rest, as we stayed in an active research centre that utilises Mpala as a living laboratory. We of course had the usual game drives here, but the most interesting part for me was looking around the ongoing long-term research in the park, such as herbivore exclusion plots and the reactions of the charismatic whistling fawn acacia to varying ant species and environmental factors. A hike to the highest part of Mpala concluded the trip, giving us views of the entire park, and then it was one last van journey to the airport and back to the not so sunny UK. So that was a bit of a whirlwind coverage of the 2019 LAC 350 Kenya trip. We got up to and saw a lot more than I've had time to mention, but hopefully I've shown how amazing this module was for a student interested in ecology and conservation. We gained experience in the field, got the chance to observe many new species and received lectures from experts working in the Kenyan environment. I couldn't have asked for a better way to start my third year at Lancaster.